Hey, good morning, options traders. Welcome, everyone. And I've been hearing about a lot of traders out there asking about vertical spreads. And fabulous strategy, love them, use them all the time. But like all strategies, there are times that they work, or at least work really well, and there are times that they don't. And the one thing that I find that most traders overlook, mostly because they don't understand it, but is the delta trade-off with all of your spreads. So for anybody who uses vertical spreads, again, love them, but there's a really important characteristic about vertical spreads that you've got to be aware of, and that is the delta trade-off. So understand that all strategies are about trade-offs, and I've talked about this countless times in past videos that no trader can really tell you that one strategy is better than another. They're just different. So don't ever fall into the trap where somebody says, oh, you should only use this strategy instead of this one because it's better. It's not, it's different. And that's why it's important to understand about all of the art and science of options trading and how these strategies are going to be affected with time, stock price, and volatility. So the thing to understand for anybody using spreads, regardless of what type of spread it is, is that spreads have long and short positions. That's what defines them as a spread. And that means they're going to affect all of your Greeks. Delta, Gamma, Theta, Vega, Rho will all be affected just because you have chosen a spread over an outright long position or because you've chosen one spread over a different spread. But perhaps the one that's most affected, the one that has the biggest effect that people often overlook is your Delta. And the thing that you want to understand is that all spreads will reduce your deltas. And that's because you've got long deltas on the one that you own, you've got short deltas on the one that you sold, and we just combine them, add them together, and that's going to be what we call your net delta. So the idea to understand is that spreads move slowly. These are not fast movers. Again, that doesn't make them bad, it just makes them different, but you have to be aware of this. So to make the point, I'm going to just talk about vertical spreads. So here is the profit and loss diagram for a 100-105 vertical spread. And I think you all know by now, I've talked about it in pretty much all of the videos, we always get a bend at the strikes. So you can see here that we've got a bend at 100. This is our long 100 call. And we have another bend right here that is the short 105. And we get this typical vertical spread looking graph. Now remember, this is at expiration. So down in this range, we have zero deltas at expiration. And up in this range, we have zero deltas at expiration. And if we're in between these strikes, we've got 100 deltas at expiration. But unfortunately, traders see this expiration graph and they say, oh, as long as the stock is somewhere between 100 and 105, I'm effectively controlling shares of stock. No, you're not. That's only true at expiration, which remember means, let's say the final five seconds going into the closing bell on expiration Friday. That's when you're going to have 100 deltas. But today your risk graph is going to look something like this. And as time goes by, that red line is going to slowly move towards the blue. So let's say that we've got this long 100, 105 vertical spread, but right now the stock is at 85 whether you bought it when the stock was 100 and it's fallen, or maybe the stock is at 85 and you buy this out of the money vertical spread. Your long 100 call has got 0.0026 deltas, so almost nothing. The short 105 call, 0.0001, let's call it zero. But the spread is going to be the combination. It's going to be 0 0.0026 minus 0 0.0001. So you can see that the deltas are about the same whether you had purchased the 100 call or whether you do the spread. But that's because this short call is virtually zero. But that's not always going to be true. Let's say that the stock is up here at 90. Now your 100 call has a delta about 0.0364, the 105.0041, so your spread is 0.0323. So once again, not a real big difference if you had purchased the 100 call by itself or if you did the vertical spread. But let's keep moving. Stock comes up here to 95. See, now the long call has a delta of nearly 20. 
and your short call is starting to pick up some sensitivities here because we are getting closer to the 105 strike. It's got a delta of about 0.04, so your spread is at about 15. But again, not a huge difference. The long call by itself is uh, pretty close to 20, and you've got about a 15 delta on your spread. Not a huge difference. But what if the stock is up here at your long strike at 100? Well, now the 100 call has got a delta of about 52. The 105 call, delta of about 21. So the spread is down here at about 31. See, now we're starting to see a difference. The 100 call by itself, if you had just purchased that, would have a delta of about 52, but your spread's about 31. So that's a pretty big drop in the sensitivities there. What happens if the stock comes up here to 105? Now that 100 call is 81 delta. But your 105 is now 51.72. Notice that they swapped places. The 100 call was 51.72 delta when the stock was 100, but now the 105 is at the money. So see, your long position, because it's getting closer to that one delta, is going to start slowing down. But this one's going to start picking up. And that's what's going to keep these deltas very low and eventually push them to zero. So if you had just purchased the 100 call, you'd have a delta of about 81. But look at your spread down here at about 30. And this is why traders sometimes are scratching their heads going, how come my spread's just not moving? I've got this $100 call. It's got a delta of 81. And the stock's you know up two or three bucks and my spread's not moving. Well, that's why you've also got this short position in there. And your net deltas are your long deltas, 81 minus 51. What if the stock goes up to 110? Now your 100 call has a 95 delta, but the 105 is 80. So look at your spread, 15 deltas. See, it's starting to flatten out. And that's because the increase in the 100 call wasn't as big as the increase in the 105 because it's starting to flatten out. Watch what happens if we move up here to 115. Now your 100 call is 0.99, getting close to that one delta, which is where it cannot exceed because now it's behaving like stock. But so is your 105. It's not far behind. It's at a 95 delta. So what's your spread? Almost zero. And that's why you can see that this red line here is starting to get fairly flat. See, as it moves up towards this blue, it will eventually be exactly flat. And that's when your 100 call becomes one and your 105 call becomes one. And when we subtract them out, we'll be zero. But that's not going to happen until we get right at expiration on that blue curve. But today, not too far off of it. So the thing to understand here is that, yes, this 100 call that you have might have a very high delta. But if it's part of a spread, it's getting reduced. And depending on where the stock price is, depending on volatility, and depending on time, those numbers are going to change. And that's why you have to understand your strategies and your Greeks if you are to make very good use of your vertical spreads. So if you get nothing else from this video, understand for those of you using vertical spreads that your vertical spreads move slowly. They are a slightly directional strategy, but they're also about time decay. And unfortunately, traders buy these spreads because they say, I think the stock is going up and I just don't want to spend as much for this long call, so now I'm getting a cheaper call. Uh, sort of. It's a long call and a short call. And so they will be competing against each other for those deltas. So if you don't understand how your deltas will be affected by time, volatility, and the stock price, well, you may end up with strategies that lose money, even though you were correct about the stock's direction. And for anyone who'd like to learn more about the arts and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course, Strategy Lab, and a brand new technical analysis course. It's all at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on the Facebook trading group, Options A to Z, and you can find a link in the description below.